What's going on friends, Twitchy Hedwig here, and this is going to be a fun video. I did a poll on Twitter to determine the next video I would be creating, and the response was crazy. Four entire votes. You're killing it, guys. Uh, the suggestion for doing Bug Pokemon Origins comes from my friend Kurt, Never Expo on Twitch and YouTube, who is a big fan of Bug-type Pokemon. And when I told my friends that my next project would be Bug-type Pokemon, I was really surprised at the level of excitement that generated. I was a little overwhelmed with suggestions for Pokemon to do, and really cool backstory ideas. And I'm a little sad I couldn't cover every single one that was suggested to me, but maybe that'll leave room for a part two in the future. Now, while this video is based on bug type Pokemon, not all of these Pokemon are based on true bugs. In all actuality, there is a difference in insects and bugs. Bugs specifically are insects, but are separated into the order Hemiptera. Insects in the order Hemioptera have V-shaped forewings called Hemiolytra, and they have beak-type mouths called stylets that they use like a straw to eat their food. I know that's very specific. The main thing to remember is that while all bugs are insects, not all insects are bugs, and we'll leave it at that for right now. And let's get into the list. Number one, Volcarona. I'm really excited to start off with this one. Volcarona is a fan favorite and a very cool concept for a Pokemon. This was the first suggestion that I received from Kurt himself, and I was happy to oblige. Volcarona is strongly based on a very cool species called an Atticus or an Atlas Moth. Uh, Atticus moths were once known for having the largest wing surface area amongst moths in the entire world, um, but that title was recently overtaken by the Hercules Moth from Australia and New Guinea. Now, the Atticus moth is not a bug, but it is from the insect class Insecta and the order Lepidoptera, but Volcarona is still a bug type nonetheless. Now, a really cool fact about the Atticus moth is that the Cantonese name translates to snake's head moth. And the reason for that is if you look at the upper sections of its wings called the apical extension, they actually look like real snake heads. This could be some kind of evolutionary defense strategy or maybe a happy accident, but the resemblance is there and it's really cool. Now, other than the Atlas Moth, another reference that you can find in Volcarona are in its wings themselves, which per Bulbapedia are modeled after tiger lilies. There is actually more significance here than just looks, as the tiger lily is a flower that's known in Buddhism to represent mercy and compassion. And Volcarona sort of resembles the same thing. As its dex entry in Ultra Moon states, according to legends, it was hatched from the flaming cocoon to save people and Pokemon that were suffering from the cold. Although, this reference may be a bit of a stretch, because its Ultra Sun dex entry reads, it was feared by ancient people who referred to it as the Rage of the Sun. So that's Volcarona for you, a terrifyingly unpredictable Pokemon based on a really big moth and a beautiful flower. Number two, Pinsir. Okay, once again, we have a fan favorite on this list. Pinsir was the first suggestion I got from nearly everyone when determining what Pokemon to cover in this video. It's literally the epitome of a bug type Pokemon, which is really funny because the so-called bug that Pinsir is based on is not a bug at all. You see, Pinsir is based on a stag beetle, which is an insect in the Insecta class, um, but it's from the order Calliopatera, which, like we said earlier, true bugs are in the order Hemiptera. Pinsir is based off a particular stag beetle named Prosopocoilus inclinatus, which is a popular species used in insect fighting. And that's really funny because I wrote an entire section originally on how this explains Pinsir being a bug fighting type. But then I checked and I realized that Pinsir is a pure bug type. Even its mega form is bug flying. So while this may be kind of a missed opportunity by Game Freak, that doesn't necessarily mean that Pinsir can't hold its own in a fight. Its dex entry from Sun reads, it grips its prey in its pincers and splits them apart. Gross. Seeing as Pinsir is nearly 5 foot tall and over 120 pounds, that's kind of terrifying. The entry continues, although it is a powerful Pokemon, it can't deal with the cold. Which is also a reference to stag beetles, as during the winter, adult stag beetles prefer to stay underground and away from the elements. I also wanted to add in here that I am in love with the French name for pincer, Scarabrute. 
it's so clever. Scarab means beetle and brute just means brute, <laughs> like brute strength, or the Webster definition of brute, which is a savagely violent person or animal. And I think that's pretty fitting. Number three, Heracross. I don't know about you guys, but I really love Heracross. I think it's a very strongly designed Pokemon, and in a weird bug way, it's kind of cute. Look at those eyes! Heracross doesn't have the most surprising origin story, but it's such a perfect match that I really felt the need to include it. Heracross is very obviously based on the Japanese rhinoceros beetle. Everything from the long cephalic horn to the legs to the body shape, everything, is just pure rhinoceros beetle. Funny enough, Japanese rhinoceros beetles are very similar to stag beetles like pincer. They're both from the order Coleoptera, so Heracross isn't based on a true bug either. Shocking! And Japanese rhino beetles are commonly used in insect fighting. Um, but unlike Pinsir, Heracross is appropriately typed as bug fighting. I still think this is hilarious, as Pinsir seems so aggressive and Heracross is over here looking cute and just wanting to eat some honey. Which, that's also a reference to the rhino beetle, as their favorite foods are fruits, tree sap, and anything with sugar in it. Honestly, same. It's not surprising that a Pokemon was made specifically over a Japanese rhino beetle, or kabutomushi in Japanese, because they are very prominent in Japanese media and culture, appearing in ads and in anime and in TV shows, and they're a very common pet for Japanese children. Overall, I think the translation here is very successful, and it's really easy to tell what animal that they were going for. Number four, Cricketoon. It was when I was writing this part of the video that I realized, we're not going to cover any actual bugs in this video. Spoilers. I find it hilarious that the vast majority of bug type Pokemon aren't even based on true bugs, and Cricketoon is no exception. Personally, Cricketoon is my favorite bug type Pokemon. It's not much more than a meme for a lot of people in the Pokemon community, and we all know why. But I find the design incredibly endearing, and I unironically love its call so much. Now, while Cricket is literally a part of its name, Cricketune is only very loosely based on a cricket. No, Cricketune is based on a very cool insect called the Violin Beetle. Violin Beetles are also a part of the Coleoptera class with Stag and Rhino Beetles, aka not a bug and aren't the most attractive looking creatures in the world. Like this article I referenced stated, it's no Stradivarius. Even so, you can see the reason for its name, and you can see all the references through Cricketune's design. Funny enough, Cricketune has more of a guitar design on its stomach than a violin, but if you read its dex entry from Diamond, it crosses its arms in front of its chest when it cries to make melodies, sort of like a violin bow. And this is also a reference to how crickets use their elytra to make chirps by rubbing them together. Another fun musical reference is Cricketune's mustache and cape, which represents a musical conductor or a composer. Funny enough, its moveset also has a few cute, albeit probably accidental, references to its musical prowess. It learns Sing and Parish Song by Level Up, Echoed Voice by TM, and Hyper Voice by Tutoring. I love Cricketoon so much, even though its typing is a little bit misleading to its origins as it's not based on a true bug, but at least as a bug type it's still based on an insect, unlike this last entry on our list. Number 5, Shuckle. I know, I was surprised too. This Pokemon was suggested to me to cover during a stream one day, and I was like, thanks, but the video is about bug type Pokemon. I was gently corrected and advised that Shuckle was in fact a bug rock type Pokemon. What? I really had no clue. I was just dumbfounded. And honestly, I can't explain the bug typing. I don't know why it's a bug type. But my job isn't to judge a Pokemon's typing, but is to educate you lovely people about the Pokemon's origin story. And this one's pretty spot on and pretty interesting. So most of us just assume that Shuckle is a turtle, but if you look at Shuckle, you can see it really doesn't resemble a turtle. The casing that Shuckle is inside doesn't really resemble a turtle's shell and plastron, as it has individual holes for each leg and its head. 
In all actuality, Shuckle is based on a creature called an endolith. Now, an endolith isn't a species of animal, but rather is a name for any organism that lives inside of a rock, coral, or animal shells. Now, one type of endolith is an amoeba, and I think you can see the reference there. And also, there are particular types of endoliths called cryptoendoliths that live inside of pores inside mineral grains and rocks. And I believe that this is the type of endolith that Shuckle is based on, and I believe that shell represents the porous rocks where you can find cryptoendoliths. There are many endoliths as well that are extremophiles, which means that they can survive in geochemically extreme environments, like extreme heat or extreme cold, and live in areas that are considered inhospitable to complex life forms. And I personally think this is why Shuckle has the highest base defense stat and base special defense stat of any Pokemon. Honestly, I've always seen Shuckle as a pretty ridiculous Pokemon, but now that I know more about its origin story, it really makes a lot of sense. It really looks like more of an organism that's coming and living out of a rock than it does a turtle. And if you really look at its stats, it makes a lot of sense. High defenses and low everything else. I still don't really have any solid theories for the bug typing, so if you have any theories, please let me know in the comments. And that's a wrap. Thank you everyone for watching this video. And if you enjoyed, I would really appreciate if you gave this video a like and share it with all of your po fellow Pokenerd friends. I plan on continuing the series further and I really wanted to make a focus in this video on making it more science-based than opinion-based. And I really like that approach. And I think that we might need to continue with a few more bug type Pokemon in the future. And as always, thank you for your time, friends, and go catch some bug-type Pokemon. Bye!